the almost perfect podcast. You're mentioning getting sucked into social media just now, but you're also someone who has very much advocated that Twitter isn't real. So where, where do you stand on that these days? Um, I mean, when I said it isn't real, I was just saying, I was talking in particular in the South African context. As number one. Sure. A majority of the people do not have uh, Twitter. The majority of South Africans don't use Twitter. The majority of South Africans struggle to access internet. Which I think it's, it's tantamount to just abject, abject poverty. To not like be able to access information you know, on Twitter. Yeah. It's worse than like <laughs> it's worse than famine. Almost. It's information the inequality that it creates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's not like we're not capable of. It's just we we elected the wrong people, so they don't. It's not. It's not like it's a crazy thing in South Africa, twenty twenty one. And someone and people can say and confidently say that I can't access that job and, and opportunity because I don't have the internet and all applications are online. So that one excludes me. That's a crazy thing. Yeah. That's crazy considering you had a, it shouldn't be like a thing that stands in people's way of just surviving. You know, once it's that I'm with you one hundred percent. It's it's the it's the it's the most it's the most Painful thing to watch. It's, it's painful to watch cell phone companies overcharge for, for this data. It's, all, it's over. It's painful to watch government just be lackadaisical about a situation that affects the majority. Because once you have the internet, your brain is in that world and it, it allows you to create businesses and it allows you to, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Half my life has been because of the internet. Like everything yeah. I'm doing, this, like, but everything I've learned in the last ten years has come from access to the internet. Not even ten years, fifteen years. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'm one hundred percent with way, you there, man. The way money moves, the way you know, you understand what I'm saying. Everything is is, is on the internet. Like for, now, for you to not be on the internet in that way is uh, so. But with the statements, you know, Twitter is not real, and with this disconnect that there is. So there's obviously this portion of society and culture that thinks that they're moving things forward in South Africa because they've got access and they can talk to each other all day and you know they're part of the conversation but how do you see it from the other side then because in reality you know like I think especially in stand-up comedy you kind of see that South Africa is many different things but that people on the ground aren't experiencing the same thing that the middle classes necessarily are and so was that kind of the whole Twitter isn't real thing and that it doesn't have necessarily the effect that people think it does or people that are involved in it think it does. Yeah, yeah. So Twitter would have an effect in my life because if I'm being honest, a lot of the people that consume what I do on stage, people who can pay 200 bucks for a ticket to see me are generally middle-class-ish people, right? Like, yeah. And so that's my... That, that would be in turn my audience. So if I do something that gets me canceled or whatever the case is, that's definitely my reality because those are the people I've connected with. But there's people who just, it wouldn't affect them at all. You'd be like, yeah, I could still go to perform in the rows of involved, but people will pay 80 bucks, maybe 40,000 people there. I get my check and I'm out. Or, you know, they, there's a way that doesn't include the people that are on Twitter. That's what I meant. By 